Welcome to video 107. This is going to be a very quick VBA tutorial about how to manage a large data set if you have accidentally got some blank rows throughout. So you can use this principle for blanks or for a particular search target. We're going to do both. The trick when you are going to delete rows is that you want to start from the bottom of the data set and work your way to the top. Whereas normally in a loop, I would start at the top and work my way down. The difference is, is that if you, for example, see row 29, it is currently blank. If our code is going to be uh, checking the status of a row, finding out if it's blank and then deleting it if it is, then what happens is what's currently row 30 now becomes row 29. Whereas the code wants to immediately jump to code to row 30. And so what you can find is that rows get skipped, in particular the row after a target row. So if you're looking for blanks, the row after a blank row won't get checked. And so you can fix that by starting at the bottom. Because if we were coming up, we would check row 29, we would find that it was empty, we would delete it, and then we would move to row 28, and that is exactly how you want to do it. I've just put a couple of formula in place to help us understand what's going on. We just zoom across to the right hand side. There are some formulas. If you haven't seen these before, you might want to take a look. So to find the last row with text in it, so we've got a column A with names. To find the last row that has a value in it, use the match function. And what you want to search for is a very large value. And so in text terms, a large value is a whole lot of Zs. I just put six, I think, in a row. But um, I think you can have 200 in a, 286 or something like that in a cell. So you could put 286 Zs in there. And I just want to look using an approximate match in the player name column. If you've got a row of numbers, then just checking for a very large number means that what it'll do is it'll check every row and it can't find anything that matches, so it'll just do the last row. But what we can see here is, importantly, these are how many rows there are. I used a standard count A for that, and there are 18 blanks. So we want to see uh, the code go through and delete those 18 blanks. So ideally, this cell will say zero, and this yellow cell here, deleted rows, will say 18. So let's run the code. We'll have a look first and we'll see what it tells us. Here's the code here. I've put some comments. If you're not familiar with VBA, the comments are green. They are preceded by an apostrophe and they do not run. So there is no action from any of the green text. I've declared three variables. Then what I've done is make sure I've selected the correct sheet. I've found out where the last row of data is by using a, a, a really reusable piece of code that I have in a holster all the time because I use this. So it starts at the bottom of the spreadsheet, row 1,049,000, and then it goes up until it finds a row of data. It's resetting x equal to zero. X is that yellow shaded cell that's counting how many deleted rows there are. And then the loop begins. And now this is a critical line of the entire video. For i equals last row to 3000, step minus one. Now I was testing this code earlier and I only wanted to test it on the bottom few rows. So I'm gonna change that. We wanna go from the last row of the table to the first row of the table, which happens to be row number two, because row number one is a heading. The step minus one means that it decreases by one each time it runs the loop. So it starts at row 3,500, then 3,499, and so on. So the step minus one is simply the fact that it's going backwards. The test that it's running is that if the first column of that row is blank, then delete the entire row. Then make sure you've recorded that you've deleted a row and continue with the loop. Once you finish, go to the top of the sheet, 
and write how many rows were deleted. So that's everything that happens there. If I'm inside this procedure, I can click the play button and it will begin. If you want to see it in action, you can go to the developer tab, which we're on already, go to macros. In this workbook, there's only one procedure called loop from bottom, and I'm going to click run. And what we can see over the right hand side is that there is 18 deleted rows, and there are now zero blanks. If I insert just a few more blank rows in there, because this can happen sometimes if you're pasting data in from an external database, such as a GPS system or something, that you get some problems. I can run it again, and what we'll find is that deleted rows first resets to zero, and then it will become six because the count blanks currently say six. All right, let's run it just to check it a second time. And you can see it only takes a couple of seconds to do all three and a half thousand rows. And we've now got no blanks again, and the deleted rows are six. So we've got someone called Scott Hoyle in the system. He's got a bunch of rows, so let's have a look and see if we can apply the same logic to that. He is currently in row 19. So if we go to the code, and in place of this blank, we type his name. So the exact same thing is going to happen as before. It's going to go row by row, and it will assess the first column of each row and delete any target rows that it finds. So we can see he's in 19 and 39. So if we run this, we can see the formulas are working pretty hard in the top right hand corner of the screen. But they've now all been deleted, 204 rows were deleted, and we can quickly glance and see that there are none that match his name. So a nice little simple trick, the real key behind this one was the starting at the bottom of the data set and working your way up. Once you do that, you can apply any types of criteria you like.